the average annual premium for employer-sponsored health insurance for a family is now more than $23,000 per year and climbing. That's just crazy. It's also unsustainable. Many companies have given up hope that anything can be done in healthcare to lower costs and improve value, leaving them feeling like a snowball in well, you know where. I'm Josh Butler, healthcare consultant and advisor to employer organizations around the country, and this is season two of A Snowball's Chance in Healthcare, a show about restoring hope in healthcare. Our mission is to help employers lower their health care and benefits costs, become more competitive and profitable organizations, and put more value back into their employee benefits. And now, here's your host and 2022 Broker of the Year, Josh Butler. Well, hey there, and welcome back, everybody, and thanks for joining us for this latest installment of A Snowball's Chance in Healthcare. I'm your host, Josh Butler, and I'm also the president of Butler Benefits and Consulting, a healthcare benefits and consulting and brokerage firm located right here in the bomb city. Uh, we're focused on building health plans for employers that reduce costs and they improve access to care and they improve quality of care and value in employee benefits. And each and every week we're tackling a topic in healthcare and um, we're sharing strategies and we're sharing tips and solutions on ways that employers specifically uh, and sometimes families can reduce their health care costs, improve their uh, health care quality and access, and uh, improve value for their employees. And for those of you that are not from Amarillo, uh, you might be wondering uh, about our city's nickname, the Bomb City. Uh, Amarillo is also known as the Bomb City because of our Pantex plant here, uh, which is where nuclear warheads are uh, get get their final assembly or final disassembly. It's a very interesting uh, facility, very, very cool place, and um, and uh, I think it's the only facility in America that does that, assembles nuclear warheads and disassembles nuclear warheads, if not, but anyways, Bomb City, Amarillo, Texas, that's where we're located, and uh, today uh, we're discussing a topic that's probably going to feel like somebody dropped a bomb on you, uh, that's for sure, we dropped plenty of bombs on this program, um, uh, and we're going to do it again today, but first, I'm going to start like I do many, many episodes, and I'm going to start with an analogy uh, to get your mind going and how ludicrous some things that happen in healthcare, how ridiculous they actually are. And so I'm going to start with a little um, with a little analogy. So I want you to first imagine that you're in a store, say it's a grocery store, and you're shopping for shampoo and conditioner. Now the shampoo goes on first to clean the hair. And the kiss conditioner makes the hair silky and smooth. <laughs> That's a little uh, Billy Madison reference for you uh, fans out there of Adam Sandler. Um, but anyway, you're shopping for shampoo and conditioner, and you're on the shampoo out, and you go over, and there's all different assortments, right? There's all different kinds of brands. I don't know different shampoo brands, but there's all different kinds there. And there you see the shampoo bottle, and it's $8 for a single bottle of shampoo. That's great. So you pick it and you throw it in a the basket. There's eight bucks. Then you move down a little bit and there's all the conditioners, the bottles of conditioner. And you look around and you find another bottle of conditioner. You test them. You smell them. I know you You guys are at the grocery store and you're popping the cap and you're smelling. I do the same thing. We're all guilty of it. But anyways, you pull a bottle of, sh of conditioner off the shelf and it's also eight dollars. So you're going to pay eight dollars for the shampoo and you're going to pay eight dollars for the conditioner total of 16 bucks. Now look at me. Isn't that, isn't that something? 16 bucks. Great. So easy, right? But then you go down the aisle a little bit further and there it is, right? It's the two-in-one bottle. And I remember the very first time you saw two-in-one shampoo and conditioner combined. You know, man, it's awesome. Think about how convenient it is. It's, it's one application versus two applications. It'll make my life more efficient. I'll waste, le I'll waste less water in the shower because I spend less time with the two-in-one. And you look and you're, just, you're so amazed. And you're like, you know what? Forget this shampoo bottle and this conditioner bottle. I'm going for the combo, the two-in-one combo. But then you look and you see the price tag. Yeah, you know where I'm going. Everybody knows where I'm going. And it's $1,800 for uh, uh, the suave two-in-one, right? Now, no lie. <laughs> Think about it. $1,800. Now, 
Who in their right mind would pay $1,800 for a product that simply combines one $8 product and another $8 product, you put them together, and all of a sudden you get to charge $1,800? Who would pay $1,800 for that shampoo and conditioner combination bottle? Nobody. Nobody would do that, right? I mean, no, nobody would in their right mind would do that, right? But folks, I want you to understand something. Hear me clearly. Every single day in America, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands and tens of thousands of times, every single day, this very thing happens in healthcare. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The first problem is, there's a lot of problems with this, by the way, but imagine if the grocery store was not required to put a price tag on that two-in-one shampoo bottle and there was a third-party payer mechanism that worked in the background and nobody was aware of it and knew how it worked, well, they could probably get away with it too. And that's why we're such big fans and advocates of transparency and things of that nature. The problem is people simply don't know that this is happening behind the scenes because that's where it all takes place is behind the scenes. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about yet another reason why health insurance is so darn expensive in this country. And, uh, you know, so that's what we're going to discuss. Now, let's continue on in this analogy. Follow me for a second on the shampoo conditioner analogy. And let's talk about combination drugs, taking two relatively inexpensive items and ingredients and combining them together and charging $1,800, right, uh, uh, or the equivalent or, or something like that. And some of these are way worse than $1,800. Um, okay, but we're going to talk about um, these, this one drug, a combination drug, that combines two very common, two very inexpensive ingredients, puts them together, and uh, that's where we're going to drop a bomb on you. Okay, now, other important things to remember, the prices that are set on these combination drugs, they're not determined, ladies and gentlemen, by the drug's clinical value. It's not like they're putting these two uh, ingredients together, creating this new pill, and it cures cancer all of a sudden. There's not any additional clinical value in these drugs. Um, the prices are not determined by their clinical value. They're not determined by the amount that the manufacturer has invested in things like research and development or even human clinical trials. N none, of that, none of that's even applicable on, on these drugs. The prices are just merely set by the manufacturers where they want to set the price. And because of our third-party insurance payer systems, they're allowed to get away with it. And so today we're arming you with information and data and answers as so you can combat these types of things, okay? Also, second thing, second point, many times, very often, I have ran into this personally, the prescribing physician is also unaware of what these drugs they're prescribing cost. It's a very frequent conversation. I talk to a lot of doctors, ladies and gentlemen, and we start talking about the price tag in healthcare, and it's, it's a very common thing to find a physician that has no clue about what something costs. Um, you know, what the ultimate price tag's in. But just to remind everybody, I'm going to talk about five drugs today, and I'm going to identify them by name, and I want everybody out there to know that these meds that I'm going to talk about, and there's many, many others that you have to be aware of, but these five in particular are found in almost every single formulary in America. Almost every single health insurance plan in America covers these combination drugs, and, and there's a whole lot of reasons why, including rebates that are paid by the manufacturer. There's other people making money on uh, covering these medications. And again, y'all y'all heard me speak frequently about health insurance is just a pass-through model. Before Blue Cross Blue Shield or Aetna or Cigna can pay for these drugs, they first have to extract premiums out of companies and employ paychecks to pay for these drugs. And you're going to start asking, why do they even cover this? <laughs> We'll talk a little bit about that too, but I'm going to give some examples, okay? Here, here's just a few examples, and if you're a self-funded employer out there, listen up. Get your drug formulary out. Get out your drug formulary and look for these medications that I'm about to talk about. Do you, does your plan cover these drugs? And if they do, you need to be asking some seriously hard questions 
to your pharmacy benefit managers, your PBMs, to your brokers, to your consultants? What are they doing for you if they're not doing this type of work for you? But as I mentioned, if you're fully insured with a big carrier like Aetna or Cigna or Humana or one of the big you know, insurance companies, guarantee you these are in your formulary. Guarantee you. So let's dive in for a little bit, and I'm going to talk about uh, five different drugs and so you to be, be aware of them. The first one is called, and excuse me, folks, if I can't pronounce these med medications correctly, well, it's just blame it on my West Texas education. But the first one is called Zegerid, Z-E-G-E-R-I-D, Zegerid. And let me tell you about Zegerid. It's a combination drug that combines two over-the-counter household items. One is omeprazole, and the other is sodium bicarbonate. Now, that's just a fancy way to say baking soda, okay? That's sodium bicarbonate. The other thing um, that's in there is omeprazole, okay? That's Prilosec. You can buy Prilosec, ladies and gentlemen, over the counter. They even have Prilosec OTC, right? Over the counter. So together, Prilosec, or uh, I'm sorry, separated, if you were to buy just Prilosec, and baking soda separately and take these two things and put them together, you're going to spend about, you know, 12 bucks, $11.50. But a 30-day supply of Zegarid, ladies and gentlemen, covered by your insurance, your insurance covers it, uh-huh, $3,400 a month. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to know why health insurance is so expensive? Because your insurance company is paying $3,400 less your $5 or $10 copay. So they're paying $3,390 for things like an over-the-counter medication and baking soda combination. Zegarid, remember it, okay? <laughs> Two simple ingredients that if you take them separately, $11, okay? Here's another one, one of the most popular ones out there. I know a lot of consultants watch this podcast as well and listen to this radio show. Duexis. Duexis. Everybody's heard of Duexis. It's made headlines. It's been on the news. Investigative journalists have done specials on it. It uh, combines ibuprofen and famatidine. Ibuprofen, right? And famatidine, which is Pepsi. You can get it over the counter. All right? Separately, you're going to spend about 18 bucks on those two ingredients. Not too bad. You can buy them without a prescription. You can buy them over the counter for about $18. A 90-day supply of Duexis Right now is about $3,100, $3,100. Vimovo, here's another one. It's another heartburn and pain medication combo. This one uh, uh, puts together esomeprazole and naproxen. Naproxen is just like Tylenol. It's like a painkiller, and uh, esomeprazole is Nexium. These are over-the-counter medications, guys. Uh, together, again, those ingredients are extremely um, you know, inexpensive. But what does Vimovo go for? A 60-day supply, $2,700. Insurance plans from coast to coast are paying these types of prices on the back end. Now, here's how that works. If, if, if uh, you have Vimovo on your formulary, and let's say it falls into a certain tier and your copay is 30 bucks, you're going to only pay $30. And we're going to talk about copay cards here in just a second, but you're going to pay $30. Well, who pays the other you know, $2,670. Well, if you're a self-funded employer, the answer is your employer, which is you. Okay, you're, you're, you're self-funded and your employer's self-funded. If you're fully insured and you're saying, well, my insurance covers it. Yep, your insurance covers it. But you're giving them, you know, 12,000 reasons to do what next year? To raise your premiums year over year. Again, claims drive the premium cost. And if you're paying these types of prices for these types of drugs, well, then you can understand why premiums are so high, right? Vicodin, another one, hydrocodone and acetaminophen. Nudexta is another one, uh, which is dexomethorphan and qu uh, quinidine. You know, quinidine is used to treat certain types of irregular heartbeat and stuff like that. And dextromethorphan is simply cough syrup, okay? Again, two very common, you know, prescriptions that can be purchased separately, um, you know, for a lot less. Um, New Dexter goes for about $800 for every 30-day fill. Now, that's five examples. Zegarid, Duexis, Vimovo, Vicodin, and New Dexter. Write those down. If they're covered under your plan, 
then it's the equivalent of that two-in-one suave, okay? Paying $1,800 for a single bottle of shampoo and conditioner versus buying them separately for $8 and $8, okay? Now, I want to talk a little bit about one manufacturer, Horizon Therapeutics, because we pulled up their uh, 2016 SEC filing, and there's some statements in there. And in their 2016 SEC filing, um, you know, they, the CEO of their organization had this statement, and I want to read it uh, to you really quickly, and we're going to talk about it. He, he stated, quote, We have faced challenges due to pharmacists increasingly switching a patient's intended prescription from Duexis and Vimovo to a generic or over-the-counter brand of their active ingredients. We have faced challenges. Well, poor you. Poor you, Horizon Th Therapeutics, that um, you're facing a challenge where you can't hide from the American people that you're charging $1,800 for a two-in-one bottle of shampoo versus eight and eight to buy them separately. Oh, I'm sorry that pharmacists are switching the prescriptions at the pharmacy level in order to avoid patients and their health plans getting popped with uh, you know, $2,700 Duexis or $3,100 Duexis, right? That all it is is ibuprofen and famatidine. Okay, well, big deal. They also stated, quote, unquote, part of our commercial strategy to increase adoption and access to our medicines in the face of these incentives to use generic alternatives is to offer physicians the opportunity to have patients fill prescriptions through independent pharmacies participating in our Horizon Cares patient access program, including shipment of prescriptions to patients. Now let's pause, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, this is like bribes. This is like, this is like, okay, let me explain copay coupons and copay assistance cards. On their face, they may seem like extremely valuable things to patients, and don't get me wrong, there's, uh, in, I, I get that they eliminate copays and they eliminate out of pocket for patients, but let me tell you what the true motive of these manufacturers are that offer these coupons and these discount cards. Imagine if your copay was $200 for Duexis, right? There's a lot of people in this country that would get prescribed Duexis that wouldn't fill it because it's a $200 copay, and there's a lot of Americans that couldn't afford a $200 copay. So if a plan sponsor or a PBM slaps Duexis into a formulary with a $200 copay, listen what the manufacturer does. They just offer a $200 a month, a $2,400 a year copay card, and guess whose $200 monthly copay is sent to zero? The patients. And you may think, man, that's great for the patient. But remember, Who's paying it on the back end? Who's paying the full price of the drug? A self-funded employer or an insurance company who's just going to wait until your next renewal? You know, and that's if it's you know three thousand dollars for a ninety-day fill, that's a twelve thousand dollar medication. That's twelve thousand reasons they're going to have to raise your premiums at renewal. So you see what the manufacturer's doing? They're making it easy for the member to fill it by making it a zero-dollar copay, so that they can ensure, okay that that drug gets filled. That's a $2,400 investment to get a $12,000 return, right? Think about it. And so, yeah, do these copay cards, do they help patients? Yeah, it's a brilliant strategy and, it, and it's very, it, it, it's, yeah, it helps the patient, but somebody's paying for that drug, okay? Either the insurance or a self-funded employer. Now, I'm not saying that people should stop using copay cards, I get it. Your doctor prescribes a medication, and I know what most people think, including myself. You know, if my doctor prescribed this medication for me, then I must need it. Doctors and nurses are among the most highly trusted professions in the country. I understand. I get it, okay? I just simply want people to know and understand these back-end mechanisms like copay assistance and copay cards and drug coupons of what's the real motive behind these things. And I get that they lower out-of-pocket uh, out costs for patients, but someone, you, can still winds up paying the price for these types of 
mechanisms and these types of things, whether they're higher premiums or directly as a self-funded health plan. Now, I know some doctors that listen to this uh, program, they might even argue, I've had a, a couple of doctors say, well, Josh, combination drugs, the data proves that, you know, if you combine two medications into one, that the adherence uh, is going to improve. Great. That's fine. I'm not even going to argue that point. But at what cost? Yeah, adherence goes up on a heartburn medication. <laughs> you know, it's like I said, it's not like we're curing cancer with these drugs. Um Adherence goes up on Duexis. Well, at, is it worth thirty-one hundred dollars for a ninety-day fill? I, I I just don't say I don't I don't see the value there. I don't think that it, the juice is worth the squeeze, so to speak. Um, when it's eighteen dollars, so you're willing to pay. I don't even know how many percentage over cost that would be, but if it's eighteen dollars over the counter and it's thirty-one hundred dollars for a ninety-day fill of Duexis, is it worth it because it's just a little bit more convenient for people? I don't think so. So I don't really buy into this adherence argument. And I want to make something really clear, guys. When we advise our clients, um, we're not playing doctor. I'm not a PhD. I'm not a physician. I'm not a pharmacist. Okay. Um, but we do advise people, um, and I'll tell you a real quick story. Uh, it, it was Duexis. We uh, educated a woman about Duexis, and she said, my doctor just prescribed it. And I said, well, did you ask any questions? And she was like, no. So we gave her a list of questions to go back. And you know what happened? The physician was unaware of what the price was for Duexis. And she was equally shocked as we were and as the patient was, and she immediately canceled that prescription order and said, hey, if the patient's fine taking, you know, uh, these two ingredients together, which is, um, you know, ibuprofen and famatidine, taking them separately, then that's fine. That's no reason that we should do this. And so um, that was amazing. But, you know, we're not playing doctor. So we ask people and we advise people to simply ask good questions in the doctor's office. Questions like, is this medication truly necessary to treat my condition? Many, many drugs are prescribed unnecessarily, okay? And it is a great question to ask. Do I need, is this necessary, this specific medication? Number two question, what's the total price of this medication? If your doctor doesn't know, go do your own research. Get on GoodRx, do something, you know, call us, we'll help you. We can, we can tell you the price of these medications. It's what I do every day. Um, number, uh, another question, is there a more affordable or appropriate option in the same drug class? Is there another drug out there or even a combination of drugs that will yield the same clinical result at a lower price, okay? Is it safe to take the ingredients separately instead of through a combo drug? Is there a reason that they need to be put together in a single pill? Or is it okay for me to take them, you know, as individual? What are the side effects? That's an obvious question. How long do I need to be on this medication? And why are you prescribing me this particular medication? And I know some doctors don't like to be asked questions, but you're the patient. At the end of the day, it is my health. It's my body. And you know what? Ultimately, it's my dollars that are paying uh, for these things, whether indirectly through premiums or directly as a high deductible health plan holder or a self-funded employer. And so, guys, be aware of combination drugs. They're in every single formulary in America, and they're crazy. It is the equivalent of, you know, instead of buying the $8 bottle of shampoo and the $8 bottle of conditioner, it's like buying the $1,800 bottle of two for one, two in one, right? Nobody would do that. We exclude these types of drugs from our formularies uh, for our self-funded health plans in, in plans like um, High Plains Health Plan and um, uh, Apex Community Health Plan. We don't, even, we don't even cover these drugs. It's just something that is inappropriate. Um, these drugs have not been shown to improve uh, clinical outcomes uh, the manufacturers did not spend billions and billions of dollars on research and development and clinical trials. So it's not like they need patent protection in order to recoup a ton of money that got poured into making and bringing this drug to market. Okay, so it's just, they're just out there. And because other people, my insurance covers that. Well, 
yeah, it covers it. And then come renewal time, now you know why premiums are so high in this country. Shenanigans like this go on every single day. Get your data. Look for these types of things. Talk to your PBM. Talk to your brokers. And, you know, don't put up with this kind of stuff. Well, that's going to do it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. Combination drugs. Be aware, beware, and be aware. And uh, that's going to do it for this week. Join us again next week as we'll tackle another topic where we're giving you tips and strategies and solutions to give you and your employees a snowball's chance in healthcare. God bless. Have a great weekend.